a way to justify someone's self-esteem to keep themselves instead of allowing themselves to have self-esteem. How do you mean? So, as you said, you know, she would, like, it's also like, I mean, like, parents, it's pretty much um, hating the other person because they have what you want, some type of jealousy. And instead of improving yourself and focusing on yourself, you just justify why someone else has what you don't. Yeah, and why do they have it? Because they focus on themselves. Too. Oh, come on, why do they have it? They're pretty. They're, no, they're not, it's not it. <laughs> what else do they have it? Those are, those are all self-reflection things, you know? And if you, if you, if you self-reflect, you might actually get better. But if that's not a choice, then why else would they have what you want? Oh, come on. You don't think that they stole it? You don't think that they kind of like were manipulative and that's why they have what you want? You really do have these kind of choices. If somebody has something that you want, you can self-reflect and say, "Well, maybe they have this. You know, maybe they have this thing because there's something very positive about them. You know, maybe they worked hard. Maybe they they tried. Maybe they deserved it in some way." Or we can say, "Well, they must have manipulated. They must have stolen it. They must have done something nefarious to get it." Now, even the funny thing is that even if this is true, even if there's nothing that you can do about that. There's nothing that you can do about that. But there is something that you can do about this, the self-reflection part. Um, I was telling, I don't think I've told you guys about this yet, but when we're looking at, um, you know, so when, when we do studies of, of attractiveness, so we take uh, pictures of, of women ages 18, I think it was to 45, I'm sorry, 18 to 50, I think it was. It's a pretty broad range, pretty broad range. And then you ask men to rate them. What percentage of the pictures that, that, that men rate do you think that they rate as being above average attractiveness? White women. What's that? White women. What's it? White women. White women. No, I'm saying what percentage? Oh. Yeah. Sorry. They, <laughs> no, but like, they're saying like, um, like, in other words, when I show you a picture, I go, is this person above average, average, or, or below average attractiveness? And then the next picture, and then the next picture. What percentage of the pictures that you show men? Do you suppose men say are above average attractiveness? Is it true? Is it? Two percent? Fifteen. Way out. It's amazing. Eighty percent. Not many. Yeah, when they're just going through random pictures and rating them, they rate eighty percent of women as being above average attractiveness. Which is is statistically impossible, by the way. Because you know, 50%, you know, you have to have like a bell curve, right? That's that's the average means. So there has to be some kind of outliers. Not men rate 80% of women as being above average attractiveness. So if you ask women the exact same thing, pictures of men aged 18 to 50, what percentage of men do you think they rate as being above average attractive? Zero. Zero. <laughs> well, give us some hope. 15. 15. Close. 16. Close. 20 percent. 20%. Yeah. So guys, if you think that your, your crush thinks you're ugly, it probably does. <laughs> it probably does. But that's a good thing. Maybe. <laughs> Meaning that if you sit there and go, well, I'm not going to get this person based off of my looks. So what am I going to have to do? Rely on personality. Oh, damn it. Okay, so I got to know my personality. <laughs> so I better get funny, or I better get smart, or I better get ambitious, or I better get accomplished. In other words, I need to figure out this puzzle because I'm not going to be able to get it based off of this. So you're going to have to find a way to get it based off of that, which means that this is all personal development, which is a good thing, probably. Because if you find yourself getting funny, it isn't just romantically where you're going to benefit. You're going to benefit in relationships generally with like friends, with coworkers, with bosses, and you're going to find yourself getting more opportunities in life just because people like being around you. If you get ambitious, meaning that you just say, you know what, I just put my head down and work hard and develop something. People find ambition attractive. People find perseverance attractive. And all of those things that make you more attractive to, to, to women also, by the way, makes you a stronger person. So now that tells us that this is probably more about personal strengths in certain ways. If instead you're, you're very attractive, you can just kind of get by on your looks, 
You don't really have a reason to develop this. You can get by as it is. And so these things don't usually get developed. Now, again, nothing is everything. There are people who have all of it, have personality and looks. Um, then there's some of us that don't have either of it. And yeah. That kind of reminds me of like, this, this whole conversation about like, external looks is reminding me of like, how when people like say like, I don't care about looks, it's so, like, it always bothers me. Like, when people are like, I don't care about looks, like, that's not the first thing I noticed. It's such a lie. Like, like, it bothers me. I have a friend, she's, I don't want to talk badly about her. But, but, but anytime she looks at a guy, she's like, oh, like, I wonder if he has a nice personality. He, I wonder if he has a nice personality. I'm like, shut up, like, it's not true. Like, you know really well, you're looking at his face. Like, it just, like, it just, like, goes to show that people are just very vain. Yeah, so that's that's what this quote also reminded me of, just how vain people are in general. Like, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And it, what's, it, what's funny is we talk about it, by the way, like it's a terrible thing. So if, if you're good looking and you know you're good looking, well, why shouldn't you indulge that fact? You know? Um, if I'm talking to someone, um, a good example, like for example, once in a while I'll hear that someone will just say, oh, Scallon's a real asshole. Am I an asshole? I can see it, right? <laughs> yeah, I can kind of see it, you know? I can see why somebody would think I am. But if someone comes along and says, I, I, and he's stupid, oh, come on. No. Uh, I'm a lot of things, but at least I know I'm not that one thing. I can see why someone would say I'm a jerk. I can see that. I would try to be, but I can see why someone, I'm like coffee, I'm not for everybody. And so why, would, why am I okay with acknowledging that? Because I've worked very hard to become that smart thing. But if, you, and if you're attractive, you've probably done at least, you haven't worked super hard for it, but you've maintained some things. Maybe you work out, maybe you take care of yourself more. So maybe you should celebrate the fact that you are in that, in that situation. You know, we talk about like it's a terrible thing, but it's not necessarily a terrible thing. You know? Now, if you can develop both, then you know, you'll be well off. Like I, I know um, a good friend of mine, she is absolutely probably the most gorgeous human being I've ever met in my life. And she's also incredibly, uh, incredibly nice to people. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I try to get funny sometimes. So I'll make a joke about people and like, about someone's looks. And she's always like the first one to, to say, well, I think they're beautiful the way that they are. And she really means it, by the way. She's not just making up stuff. She's not just trying to be humble. She's somebody who, uh, on, she could get by off of her looks. She could find someone to take care of her. She, you know, she, she's that attractive. But she rejects all of that. And she works at a job where she takes care of, um, She's a teacher, but with like high need students, like autistic kids, and like you know really high. So she works at a school over in, in Ocean Beach, and she does that. And you sit there and go like, wow, incredible heart, beautiful, like everything is kind of in place there. And those are those are rare people to come across, you know. And when you look at her background, you can see why it is that she is the way that she is. You know, she's not even pretty because she tries to be; she just happens to be. But all the other heart stuff. But the kind of heart she has, she had to overcome a lot of trauma to get to that point where, where she is. You know, and so sometimes you find that that's the thing that, that makes a personality. You have, having to overcome something, having to overcome tra trauma makes you kinder, makes you more empathetic. Um, not being attractive makes you get funny. Like you look at, at, at someone who's like... Pete Davidson. Yeah, I was thinking of Pete Davidson, yeah. Yeah, Pete Davidson. You have to sit there and go like, how, bro? <laughs> you look at the list of people he's dated and you're like, how? It's because he's funny. Mm -hmm. Or Kevin Hart, you know? Yeah. Kevin Hart, and you know, <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> can look Kevin Hart right in the eye and go, you're hilarious. <laughs> but, you know, he's, he's, he makes it work. And so maybe that's the thing, is finding the thing that, 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 that will maximize who we could be. And then if that's the case, then you're too busy working on yourself. And so it also, by the way, keeps you humble because you're aware of these deficiencies that you might have. And so maybe that will, once you become aware of it, maybe it stops us from, from pointing out the flaws in, in, in other people. Because even if someone is, you know, let's say not as intelligent as you, or not as attractive as you, or whatever, that doesn't somehow just make, make you go whoop and lift you up. It might lift you up above someone who's unintelligent and unattractive. But it doesn't raise you up above, it doesn't raise your, your, you as a human being in any way. Especially against, because you're always going to find that person who's attractive and personality, and, 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 and. They exist out there. And so the way you compete with it, I suppose, is 
not to compete with it, but to maximize yourself, perhaps. Now, the price of hating other human beings is loving oneself. Now, it's an interesting one because it actually means something very different from what a lot of people kind of think it means. He's pretty straightforward. The price of hating other human beings. So when we hate other people, actually, Destiny got around the bat. That means that it's going to cause you to hate yourself or to love yourself less. Now, if you're thinking about it generally, like as human beings generally, um, you've seen, let me think, oh, you'll see these Instagram posts of like a dog that's doing something cute. And then we'll say, oh, humans, we don't deserve dogs. Like somehow we lift dogs up as though they're this wonderful, great thing. Um, a dog in your house probably is. Probably is. Um, if you take, if, if that dog that's in your house never lived in your house, especially if it's like a Rottweiler or a, or a, or a pit bull or something like that, let's say that it didn't grow up with you, but instead it grew up out in the wild. How nice is that dog going to be? Not at all. Not at all. And by the way, the same thing is, is true about us. If we didn't grow up in a society with, with laws and standards and enforcement, and you put us as we are out in the wild, we become very different people probably. And dogs are like this. So when we say like, oh, we don't deserve dogs, we're completely missing the point that dogs are sweet and kind because of us, because they live with us. They're not that way by nature. And that means that there's something admirable about, about us as human beings. But the message that people try to send with that is that humans are we're trash, we're horrible, we're terrible. And if you believe that about people, it's going to impact how you treat people. Moreover, it's also going to impact how it is that you see yourself, because if all humans are trash, um, well, you're a human, so that therefore means that, that you're trash as, as well. Um, I can kind of leave it at that. I don't want to go much further than that. But um, yeah, it's worth considering how it is that we see the rest of humanity and how we love ourselves in with that or not, because it probably does have an impact on it, on, on us. So, Anyway, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms?